everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Lesbian Talk, brought to you from AkumaCon. It's, oh. it's got something to do with some guy from Street Fighter 2, I don't know, probably. We have two special guests with us, but first, we have a co-guest who's always here. I forget her name. You know, we're married. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, bringing that, throwing that out there. You, you think you'd be used to this, by the way. I think her name's Wolfred. <laughs> I have great Fanta, and I'm going to pour it on you, is what's going to happen. You don't want to waste it, because it's hard to find in this country. It's like gold. It's like I must sip it lovingly. <laughs> like one of those people who, like, you know, buys a million, million dollar bottle of some kind of alcohol, and they're like, oh, look at this million, million bottle of alcohol. It's like from, like, 5,000 years ago. Let's have some. And then they, like, put three drips in, the, in a glass, and they swirl it, and they're like, ah, oh, the essence. And that's how I feel about grape-flavored soda right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. We don't get grape flavor stuff here. Yeah, we get black currants instead, which yeah. is black, awesome. Black, black currants are, uh, you know, that's our thing. Yeah. It's an abomination to heresy <laughs> and to lie. But our two special guests, we have Masako X. Hey. Yes, from Team Four Star, who is, um, I'm from Take With Take and uh, a couple other places, and yeah. you are guesting at a Kumakan. Yeah, that's right. I'm one of the uh, regulars here. I'm, based, I'm kind of part of the furniture of the convention. I've been to uh, uh, the first... The Kumacon in 2011, and they—I don't know—they just keep inviting me back. I—I I, I don't know why. Why? I'm just—I'm just a guy who makes videos, and they just—you're think... cheaper than Little Karibo, because oh. you live closer. Oh, that's uh. mean. Who <laughs> <laughs> lives in America? Well, we're we're true. here we're here in scenic Galway, and it's probably because they're like, oh, well, an English person. Look at that. That's how. Oh, that's exotic. Uh. English person. Hell, someone from Limerick's exotic. I know, right? <laughs> But we also have, um, she works on the Hagen Reviews. This is the Avatar of Decent Humor. Hi, guys. And our sister-in-law. Yes. Yes, and many of the minions who tends to get hurt. Yes, and... <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? All of the minions get hurt. And she's, <laughs> and she's usually the person feeding me lines in my episodes. We're in a hotel. Actually, no, we're not in a hotel room. We're in a bed and breakfast. And I think that we're, like, the most horrible guests ever because... We, we came home last night in different shifts, and there's only one key, and the landlady looked displeased with that look of, you've done it wrong. Like, remember we went to the Korean restaurant, and we yeah. ate each other's noodles, and they came over with much upsetness in their face and politely told us we were doing it wrong? It was kind of like that. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> this Korean place was amazing. There was almost no English language anywhere, but the food was great. I ate uh -oh. eels. But anyway, <laughs> so we're here at Akuma Khan, um, which is, it's an anime convention. And I'm an anime fan, but I haven't been in a while. Like, I was way back in the day, and then I got busy with things and stuff and forgot about it. So, yeah. Well, I, um, I've never been an anime fan, but I usually like the sort of people who go to anime conventions, and I love the dealer's rooms. So mm. I'm perfectly happy coming over. And I'm guessing you know something of anime. Uh, yeah, I guess a little bit. I mean, uh... A wee I, bit. Yeah, well, um, mainly the ma the main thing I do on the I did on Tickle Tick and Channel Awesome is um doing um anime reviews. So I was kind of like at, when I started off, I uh, was um when it was main. I think it, at the at the time, but this was before um Jazu was on. Uh, it was just a uh, Mars girl and I. We were just um doing the anime reviews. She oh, and Swade. And Swade, yes. Before and before he went he went off for a little bit. It was just uh, he he did the kind of the classic anime. Mars, Mars Girl was looking at kind of uh, all the things in general. I was looking at all the new stuff. So I just thought, you know, try. Yeah, let's broaden myself out here. Let's try and like focus on the new stuff. Boy, was it hard because <laughs> uh, it, this is the one thing I really kind of realised about anime is that now in the days of actually bearable a internet speeds, uh, you have access to everything, and you have access to everything. As in, you've got all the good stuff. Then you got all the bad stuff. And the bad stuff tends to look a lot like the good stuff until yeah. you look at it in, de in depth. Uh, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden there's a tentacle where you didn't expect it. And oh, it's <laughs> one of those! Oh, and you got just say, oh no, I'm falling down awkwardly. Oh no, sexual tension. Oh, great. Uh. I want, I want someday someone should make, either that or get the rights to some anime, and then completely write their own script, like, um, like What's Up with Tiger Lily? And, oh, yeah, and, and have it just be full of tropes that only anime fans would get. Troma did that as well. With fearless female freedom fighters. This so anybody, if you're listening, I mean, I get you know production credits, but go to it, you know, just have a ball. I mean, with them, they bought the rights to this Filipino action movie, oh, yeah. and they redubbed it. And uh, to this day, Lloyd Kaufman says that he's terrified that the producer who um, 
probably know some sort of martial arts is going to beat him up. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen the film. Uh, occasionally I use a clip from it in my reviews. The, um, what kind of writing is that? Oh, I'm glad I'm not in this scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah. That's from that. I think it was a similar thing. Uh, ADV, about ten years ago, they got a license to this anime called Ghost Stories. And uh, it didn't do very well in Japan. And I think the Japanese... Because um, usually the Japanese studios are very very protective of their of their product and they want to make sure and they constantly have a lot of toing and froing and committee meetings and changes so they say to the American and different language dubs they say you oh, you, have to, you can't you cannot do this and you you got to stick to that or you can only change the script within reason whether it's for localization or it just for because it wouldn't translate and the joke would be lost but ghost stories on the other hand the Product uh, company. I can swear on this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet. We wait, wait, wait. No, I'm fuck, 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 cunt, motherfucker, bitch, bitch, tits, tits. Thank cunt, you, asshole. Now I know. So, no, they, they, they basically knew that their anime was shit, and they just <laughs> thought that uh, they just told ADV, which was probably one of the biggest distributors of the mid 2000s, to say, "Hey, go and you can do what you want with this." And um, I think <laughs> this was gold. They could just do whatever they wanted. This was pre a bridge, bridge series. They could just. They came up with, like. I think there were loads of really inappropriate jokes. I think like, I may this, have come this, across this. this. Is this the one where the voice actors literally started making stuff up? On yeah, the they spot? just make it up. Yeah, I saw this. This was hilarious. Yeah, this is. It's just like they, they were told, you can do what you want. And these um, voice actors were the people that were used to doing all the normal stuff. And. Now they were just told, you know, go nuts. And it was very loosely tied to the story. And now that you know, it's just like, it, you, can, you can easily find it available now because ADB in its oh, form it? doesn't really exist. So you can either find it at like flea markets or you can find it probably fan subbed or, or just like dubbed online. Well, I found it on YouTube, so... It, there you go. So <laughs> it's easy to find. Just look up for ghost stories. And if you've been jaded by bad dubs or just very bad writing in, in dubs, this one is very refreshing. See, that's, that's for the, uh, we were just at a panel with Patrick... How do I say his last name? Seats. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Seats. Seats. And he was talking, he was like, it's a golden age because of the internet. And I was, I first got exposed to anime in the mid to late 90s. Mm. Where basically at randomly in the blockbuster bargain bin, or you have to went to some coast video, you'd find a random VHS with like Ninja High School Ultimate Robot Party 17 with like an exclamation point, and then it ended up being episodes 20 to 23. So you come in, in the middle, you have no idea what's going on, and it's gone. And so you're like, oh wow, I really want to find out what happens. And you go, you know, to one of the catalogs that you go to some coast video, like how much would it be? And they're like a million million dollars. For all the VHSs, and like you know, half your bedroom, you're like, oh, well. What about the uh, the one you found, the one that Kyle and Yasu reviewed? Uh, oh, oh, the 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 revolutionary one. Yes. The revolutionary girl. Your complaints about the, this? Yes. You well, must... we okay, so we found it and we rented it. A friend of mine one night, and we were drinking beer and eating pizza. We're like, oh, I'll watch this anime. It's probably good. We had just no fucking clue what was going on, and I was like, well, let's watch the subtitled version because. You know, sometimes in the dub version, things get changed around, you know, you know. Well, we had to stop it and Google the plot several times. And then we're watching this, we've gone through, like, you know, a six-pack and a half of beer, and at the pot, then the girl turns into a car, and then the bad girl, guy girl turns into a car, and then she's like, aha, you should have known that I could turn into a car, too. Which is, I think, might have been the exact line. And so we were just kind of like, huh. But the cool thing about that was the explanation for everything in this movie, and Google this because this is true, is, but she's the Rose Bride, said exactly like that. So a friend of ours, Vale, um, we decided was just ripe for, for trolling while he was drunk. We were at karaoke the next night at the bar, and every time he said something, I turned to her and I go, but Vale's the Rose Bride. I know. He's the Rose Bride. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of dubs and subs, I, this was when I walked in on the guys watching this, and I have no clue to this day what this anime was, but it was a mediocre anime at the start, you could tell that, but the subbing, oh the subbing! Mm. At one point, uh, a giant robot breaks out of a lab and debris comes falling down on one of the 
was like the, the grandpa of the main character and crushes him. He's obviously lying there dying and or dead and the main character runs up and starts shaking his shoulder and the subtitles are Cheer up grandpa, cheer up <laughs> <laughs> In that anime, Grave of the Fireflies. No. <laughs> oh sorry about that. Grave of the Fireflies too, Grave Harder. No oh, oh. are if you're traumatized write the show. Grave of the Fireflies three, never grave down. <laughs> <laughs> grave of the Fireflies four. We're still Brave here. Resurrection. Yeah. Oh yeah, just we just called Resurrection. I actually haven't seen that, but we I've read. Go I've read the plot of Hell World. And, and it's I really heartbreaking. Come has it. You should watch it. No, I don't want to. I've, I've read the plot. I know what happens, and I know I'm going to cry, so it's not happening. Really Colin lied to me. He told me it was a fun and um, a fun <laughs> oh! thing to watch. Divorce. Well, you guys are married yet, but still. Then is um what is the other one? Barefoot again. Is that the one about Hiroshima? Because I've seen yeah, that bit. Similar, yeah, it's similar. That's surprising seen, as well. I've seen that bit on YouTube. I got linked off Reddit. I, I was like... I, I was confused to find that there was a sequel, because I was like, what happens then? Does he go to the other city and get nuked ne the next week? Nagasaki? Well, it's probably like the rest of his life. You know, it doesn't always have... It doesn't always have to be an atomic bomb. Well, I, I, I grew up watching 80s sequels, and that always, yeah, it's the same always... thing, you know, in the second, so... In, yeah, the second one's set in uh, Neo-Hiroshima. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So terrible. And there's this guy in a bright red motorbike and he gains psychic powers due to the radiation. Exactly. And he has a best friend who's named after a country. Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched I watched I watched Akira in high school. Although the, actually the first uh, some of the first anime I ever watched was Three by Three Eyes. Ah. I've been told it's really good, but I don't know what it's about. It's really great. It's well it's about this kid and he ends up meeting this girl but she's actually this um she's a sanjian with these like immortal beings from china and they're really ancient but she's the last one and her father but she has like two identities because the part of her that's supernatural is sealed away and the important part is yakima gets cursed in like the first episode she raises him as as her servant and he becomes immortal and can't die and he also grows boobs a lot and that's three by three eyes huh that sounds like a that sounds like a typical anime. Take one. me, my body cannot die. That that reminds me of the one I can never remember the name of, where an angel just kind of invades this guy's life and keeps killing him accidentally in horrifying ways. Oh, that oh, that's him. um, uh, cl uh, Club to Death Dokuro Chan. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one. That is like, I love the fact the first time you meet this guy, he's just like he does something important. Um, I think he walks in on Dokuro Chan, who's like, uh. 14, 15, but it looks like 10, almost, except yeah. with a average, yeah, so average like a figure. So Age 2 elf. Kind of, yes, yes. Lily, and uh, yeah, but she just like gets this huge, big ass club with spikes and everything, and basically what, takes out half his head, <laughs> and then goes like, oh no, I'm so sorry, and then does an incantation. And the guy is just so blasé about it, he's just like, God damn it, Dr. Ocean, I told you not to do that. <laughs> it's just like, he's not just like quivering in fear or anything. And it's just like, the first season of that anime is just what because this was when I was starting 2005 because I I'd known about anime for a long time because my brother who was about five years six years older than me he had like uh, VHSs of Tank Police and I remember Project Tank Aiko Police. and and Legend of the Overfiend um, um, and guess we're gonna come to that eventually <laughs> yes yeah. it, but yeah he had all he had all these so I was very aware about it and then he introduced me to Urasai Yatsura. Did you, did, so, um, did you ever see um, Cat Girl Nuku Nuku? No, I haven't it, actually got to see that. Because it had, uh, it was one of the few ones, I remember it because my mm. eldest sibling had, had an anime collection years ago. And it was one of the few ones that had a, Brit a British dub. It was not dubbed in America. Whoa, whoa. And it was a British dub, so you had like car characters randomly from, from Liverpool and everything. And it was great. Oh yeah, I remember the this. Liverpool part of the, you know, Tokyo. Yeah, and it was this girl, sorry, this guy leaves his wife because um, her... His, his Lots wife, of places have a North Kyoto. Yes. <laughs> his wife is crazy and evil and like a businesswoman, and so he's a scientist and he runs off with his son. And then, you know, she sends her like crazy woman who are from, who are scousers to kill him. And unfortunately, it uh, injures it injures the son and all, but they're okay. But it, it kills this kitten that the son had found and sort of adopted oh. like two minutes earlier. So the guy, the dad takes the kitten's brain and puts it into a robot girl's body. She, oh, and she's like, you know, really massive tits and she's like 18. But she's still a robot girl, and it's the ongoing adventures and battling the mother's forces and stuff who want the son back. 
with the mentality of a cat. So occasionally it forgets it's human and tries to do cat things. Uh, Usually in socially awkward situations. And forgets it's a robot. And so <laughs> it tries to go swimming in like sinks and stuff like that. And there's this wonderful bit wherever there's a giant evil octopus attacking attacking people. So you have this, the, the dad and his like cousin or something, they're in like a beach Land Rover, driving to try and kill this armored octopus. So they like go up a ramp and they scream, Land Rover, attack! And crash into the side of it and like blow it up. There you go. I, I, I have not seen it. There was VHS covers years ago. It has not come out in DVD, I've, this I've version heard, of it. I've heard of it. I heard of it I, back in the day. I actually remember, because uh, I think BBC3 did a, uh, a, ja a Japanese anime special like about Japanese culture. And that, you know, that wasn't presented by Jonathan Ross for once. Yeah. And uh, they actually showed, I think, a couple of episodes of Urusa Yatsura with a British dub. And Matt Lucas was the main character in it. Oh, that sounds glorious! And, you know, the basic he writes, he made it sound like this. I'm Atari and I'm very, very stupid. Because <laughs> that is basically... The thing about uh, Urusai Yatsura is just that it's so stupid. Uh, no, but it's just the g main guy is a jerk. The gu the, the, his father just hates him and the mother just keeps going, Oh, I wish we never, I never had him. And he just goes like... Uh, then everybody in the, cu in the community hates him, said, so, today a cat got stuck up a tree, let's blame Ataru for that. That's and then terrible. it's just like, there's just like, everyone hates him, until one day, yeah, these evil, this evil demon race come, uh, comes down, and they, but they're actually really cool, they're just like, hey, we're only, we're only demons here, and we're just, you know, and, uh, yeah, Ataru has a girl, a girl crush, sort of, some on-off relationship with this girl, and then this, you know, and then Lum, who is pretty much one of the icons of anime from the eight, early 80s, uh, comes in, and I think there's some kind of contest, and then by the end of the first episode, he kind of goes like, "Yes, I've won," and then she misinterprets t interprets it because it's like, if he wins, they, they go away, and then she misinterprets that, say, "Oh, I win," and he says, "Oh, you win me? Oh, I'll have you," and then basically just calls him darling, and just like get thinks that it's a betrothal, and the, the father's totally okay with it. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> like, oh my Jerry god, one of the biggest love triangles and anime's just begun! And this is 1981. And th this is the beginning of Rumiko Takahashi, who made Inuyasha, Meiso Nikoku, and Ranma. So and many other things that I haven't heard of. Well, so no, because I recognize all the world I... Well, I recognize Ranma, I've heard of Ranma. Ranma is one of the... Uh, is the... Be the Mo the most classic. Inuyasha is like Dragon Ball Z for girls. Yes. I mean. Uh, yeah, I would agree. Meisou no Koku is a very um, it's very underrated. I had. It's very normal. It's like a soap opera. I had the f I had a VHS for the first three episodes of that, and when I was watching it with my friend, this was again back on the day we first were buying any anime VHS we could we could get our hands on, and he's like, my name is something incredibly long mm. in in Japanese, but everyone just calls me Tamahome, and she's like, why? And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, why does everyone have 17 names on the show? I was like, I don't know. Maybe they're demons. Because mm. <laughs> there's, there's just always random demons. Or aliens, aliens, or robots. Well, one thing that was really difficult back in the day when I was in high school <laughs> was that you would buy these you'd buy these VHSs, and they were in, like, you know, the box with English on it and everything like that, but you never really knew what you were getting. Like, I got this episode, I got this whole, you know, VHS about these, these, two, these two angels and they have to stop some horrible catastrophe from happening. But they seemed really gay. Like, they were both, like, really, like, you know, like, oh, kind of Oh, you from Evangelion gay? But, like, no, they seemed like there was lots of, like, accidentally touching of each other's pecs, and then and blushing and, oh, and, and awkward silence. Yeah, and I didn't from know, Evangelion gay. I didn't know that Yowie was... the 80s! Was, well, I didn't know that Yowie was a thing! I was like, are they gay angels? Why don't they just like gay angels? Are they, is it like why don't they just kiss? Are they, what, what's going on? Or like the time I got one, it looked like a super space adventure and stuff, but it turns out that this girl's a superhero in space because her bra is a sentient alien, and there's a transformation sequence. Now I was watching this in the basement on in the VHS in my parents' house, and my dad was doing a project. He was doing something to the basement bathroom, so he's up and down the stairs emptying up the bookcases and bringing supplies down. But he would always come down at inopportune times, and so I would just, you know, power off the VCR. Now, the default channel was C-SPAN. Mm -hmm. And so it would come back to C-SPAN every time he was going up, and he goes, what are you watching? I was like, well, there's an agricultural bill that's coming up to vote on. 
you know, and I'm really excited about that because I, I think that they can get, I think they can get through subcommittee, quite honestly. And he's like, <laughs> I am so glad that you are so into to ethics. C-SPAN is a, is a channel in America. Yeah, you yeah. watch Congress. He's like, that's, that's so great. And then every time I go up, I'll be like, oh, why does she have an alien bra? Is she a lesbian? What's going on? Uh-huh. That's how I ended up with Legend of the Overfina. I was like, oh, this sounds like a really great thing. Oh, my God, why is the tentacle going there? I was <laughs> given copies of uh, some of the Overfina. I don't know if it's one film in several parts. Or I, think, several I think there's, them. like, four. Yeah, um, I, I, I Uruzuki was... Doji is, like, the most, uh, that's the most well-known. That's the first one, I believe. Yeah, it was, um, I got, like, four of them or two of them. I, I got several. I was mm. given them. And um, I haven't watched them yet because uh, I'm, you know, anime is not my main thing. Yeah. I did have a discussion with, I think it was Yasu, about doing a crossover on them, but I guess that's not going to happen since you retired. Yes. But I, if, if I might end up doing them at some point. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Tentacles where you didn't expect it. It's basically that, I think that was, that's the thing that perpetuated the association and very unfair association of tentacles and anime in stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I still get that sometimes, because whenever I am... Um, I, I, I'm still very abashed when I talk to people and they say, "Oh, so why are you here in Galway?" So I, I say, "Oh, I'm here for the uh, um, I'm here for the convention that's going on at the uh, at the university." And I just think, "Okay," they just go, "Okay," and they say, "Oh, really? What's it about?" And and they go like, "Oh, how do I say this?" I could just do I could just say, "Oh, it's an anime convention." They go, "Oh, what's anime?" So they probably might not know. Long at the time, I just say, "Oh, Japanese culture." Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Japanese oh, that, culture. That's grand. Yeah. And I say. Oh, that sounds very interesting there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, uh, and I go, well, yes, and and hopefully, and then the conversation does that. And he says, oh, and then, but I think one time I had this guy who was just like, oh, it's not, oh, it's not that the anime stuff, you know, with all porn. And it's like, uh, no, it's not all about porn, you know. And he said, oh, there is some of it though. And he sounded like very enthusiastic. And it's like you like, could show me some, right? Uh, I, mean, a I got like right? say, I, I was, I, I, I eventually, I thought he was going to say, oh, you holding? <laughs> so, <laughs> can, can I like, see it? And they say, you got, you, you got any? <laughs> I'll accept that in payment. And it's like, no. They have like a trench coat with like all the pockets in here, yeah, man. I got that. And they like, oh, yeah. Whatever kind of you into, oh, I've got the lot for Ooh. you, Gav. And it's just like, no, but it's just like. I got a completely, almost like, other angle for this. Because hmm. he's like, he's like, it's not all like that. And he's like, well, but some of it is. And it's like, yeah, but if some, you're going, judging by like the sum of, then, uh, all live-action films should be considered the porn because Debbie Does Dallas exists. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. That's the thing. Yeah. And, and 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 actually, this is something that I find quite curious. And people always like um, find really stupid. And and, I, and because whenever you know sports jocks, they make fun of people that are anime nerds or like Japanese weeboo nerds and stuff. It's like um, okay, you. You accuse people of being weird because they cosplay and they go to anime conventions. They do this on a weekend. What do you guys do? You go to a football game. Some of you actually dress up in merchandise of your favorite team. You all dance around like idiots and basically have a, you know go to a, a sports venue for a weekend. Does that sound very familiar? Also, we don't alcohol judge you. Too. Huh? So I go to conventions too, so they should be familiar with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I just well, feel I like if they if they are if they if they judge uh, if sports jocks judge people that go to anime and sci-fi conventions, and uh, you just turn around and say, "Oh, well, what do you do on a weekend? You go to a sports game and you dress up, and it sounds very similar, don't you think?" Yeah, for um. And then run away because they before they might punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for literally years, I've I've seen uh, comparisons between obsessive sports fans and Star Trek conventions. Mm. I was thinking about Star Trek, but it works with anime as well. It works mm. with other things as well. I actually was at, um, at a sci-fi convention, which is a, it's actually a fair bit different to an anime convention. Anime conventions, there's a lot more, or a, there's a lot, it's a lot more, anime conventions are a lot more fun. There's a lot more, <laughs> they're a lot more just you like... You hear that, Trek, or you're going to no, 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 it's just like, it's more like, there are more spontaneous games, and everyone's just, yeah, meeting they're up bit, and bit, talking about cosplay. A bit but, more youthful. Yeah, more enthusiastic, whereas the, the con I went to, albeit it was more mellow, and this was up in the, the northern Doncaster, and it was, it was a lot of, it was very gusty, and it was, every, you know, post-Christmas and everything was... Well, really it's mellow. Doncaster. Oh, sadly, yeah, but, I mean, the people were really nice, yeah, but... but Everybody else just, like, the opened con, the, a tab of the con, so they could look know, it up. Their city is named after the act of throwing a penis at someone, you know, somebody throws a penis. 
Oh, That's gone. it. Get get out of the group. <laughs> Fired from the podcast. Don't Ca- cast her. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, oh. Someone throws a throw penis. No, where they magically that. they magically summon one into existence. Okay. But, like Hadoken, but you know, dirtier. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to stop and explain her jokes. <laughs> but no, this one. Well, yeah. When like, I when I script an episode, I have time to make don't sure it's obvious. The guest. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. But, no, it's just that they, uh, they just seem to be a lot more. It seems to be a lot more serious, a lot more like more intense discussion and a lot more arguments. A lot, a lot more, more people that look like well, Jara yeah. Martin. And a lot more and a lot more barter and a lot more bartering. Uh, I clearly well, Kirk is superior to Picard. I'll yes. Tell you what. Cisco, motherfucker. <laughs> Cisco. And then you have that one little person in the background who doesn't want to speak up. I quite like Janeway. That's your problem. Quiet, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, that, there's a lot. There's a lot more. No one um, loves you. It's a lot more insular in sci-fi conventions, and that's why, because um, the big movie comic media, which is sort of trying to be the San Diego Comic Con wannabe, because um. London Comic Con was owned, and Dublin and all the other ones are all are sprouting around the UK and Ireland. Um, they weren't allowed to be called Comic Cons for a while because of copyright, but now they're in a big enough entity that they can be. Oh. Because they were just called Comic Media Expos. But now they are Comic Cons, essentially. Hmm. Um, they, um, the trend back in 2007 when I started to go was it was mainly just a dealer's room where you could buy sci-fi junk hmm. and stuff. Well, to but, be fair, that's the that's the, my favorite part in any convention. I love the dealer's halls. Yeah, no, the dealer's halls are really good. And if you're there to just find something that's really rare, if that is what you want to go and do, it's it's a it's a big treasure trove, and that's great. But it's just like, but if you if you want to like have also a little bit of panels after you, you know once you've had a bit of a break and you've had your first round before you're going to do a second round. And then, well, you find around, the ATM and then you have to sell you and then you have to sell your house and then uh, <laughs> but after but in between you want to have like go off and do something or go to a panel and just like or find your friends and just sit down and have a friendly chat and all that and uh, one thing I've noticed is that um, the sci-fi part of the, of these comic cons is actually starting to te- uh, move aside to um, two things um, anime stuff there's a lot more anime merchandise at MCM and the London one it's now about 70% anime, mm. scattered all over the place. And then also, a lot more dedicated to YouTubers, I've noticed. Mm. Like there's, there's VidFest, which is um, an offshoot of MCM, and there are quite a few of the popular British YouTubers that are there. So there's a presence there. Whereas I remember, because I... Um, Does that include, like, uh, uh, Americans who live over here? Like, or in the, uh, like, uh, CGP Grey and uh, the guy from Vsauce? Oh, uh, not quite, not quite yet, but I would imagine that because I think there's like a summer space um video uh, YouTube meetup in summer. Well, probably be I would same. totally go to that to meet the, to meet Michael from Vegas. I, I love know, him. I He's love that. Great. He's so cool. He turns up actually. He turned up in this in this uh, show. There was like only two seasons of it, and I heard they were going to make another one, and it was like twisted but true. Yes, that's it. And it was like all of this like these like oh like you know scary science stories, but they actually had really happened, and here's how like. Like, you know, Louis Pasteur and all this other kind of stuff. And he shows up talking about how the brain works. And I was like, and I was crocheting a blanket because that's how old I am. And I, I was like, wait a second, I know the what? Vo- oh, it's the guy from Vsauce! Jesus Christ! And I think I even texted you at the time because I was still in the and, and that's what convinced me to watch the show. Yeah. Mm. I love him. He's great. Now, the Vsauce guys are very, they're, they're very good at, the, at producing interesting content and in the way that they, they, they kind of, they they deviate quite a lot. They go off and they it's almost very smoothly when they change from one topic to another. And yeah, that's the kind of show I really like. And now they weren't there yet, but I mean there was like people like uh, Tomska, Ashens, and some people from Channel Awesome, Yeah, but they were just there kind of just, just moving around and stuff. But because I remember a few years ago, YouTubers weren't really taken seriously because I requested to um, do it just like a, a normal little one hour Q and A panel for you yeah, know for my group. Just, yeah, not on the main stage, just a small little half-hour panel, Q&A, and I never got a response. So it was like, ha <laughs> ha, what is, what even is that? And they, we weren't taken seriously. But now, there's a whole section dedicated to YouTubers. That's so pretty cool. YouTubers, because TV, uh, TV is really starting to fall back, and there's really not, I, I really don't watch TV. There's a TV in my hotel room. I've not turned it on. Yeah. Because I've got, I've got, I've got Netflix, I've got YouTube. 
That's all I need. Yeah, my TV in my room actually functions as the screen for the the consoles. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I have I have a uh, I have a USB drive, so I can anything from my hard drive I can just load onto there. Mm -hmm. uh, Blip, YouTube. Yep. Yeah. 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 Do you want to hear something amusing? Do you know the big TV? It's downstairs. Mm -hmm. Do you know that's not actually connected to a TV service. That's, yeah, Colin's looking at it. Yeah. So we have yeah, this giant TV. TV it's, 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 it's got like it's got a hard inches. drive and it's got like every console ever in the world. Amen. And also the computer runs through it. We can order pizza. It's amazing. We wired this house ourselves. We wired a data trunking. There are twelve plugs behind this. Cabinet. Oh wow. And we have the fifteenth TV. We have a uh, 5.1 surround sound hooked up under this, so it's all behind the sofas. Mm -hmm. We have, at the moment, a Blu-ray player, a PlayStation 4, a PlayStation 3, an Xbox One, a Wii U, and there was an Xbox 360 in there until recently, and then that was moved elsewhere to make room for the Xbox One. <laughs> and on occasion, you will uh, get swapped out a Nintendo, a Nintendo Entertainment System, the original one that was mine, and he stole it. <laughs> well, fix it, though. A PlayStation 2 and occasionally a PlayStation 1 will appear here. I'm guessing the NAS looks pretty bad on the 15-inch on the no, TV. Cause Neil, oh, no, because There's a slight retroscope where the age of it kind of bends, but you can fix that if you play with the aspect ratio. Okay. But we didn't want to play with the aspect ratio because Neil was currently powering through Shadow of Mordor it's and didn't want to fuck with it. It's just because I noticed um, watching DVDs on, on your big screen, they look pretty bad. Blu-rays look okay. But, because this screen's just ridiculously big that you've got. Yeah, it is a really big screen. Mm. This is what happens when I leave Colin alone for a day. It was like, um, do you know who, anyone who wants a 15 inch TV? He's like, why? What did you do? So I did a thing. What did you do? I bought a I bigger one. Went and bought another TV. Like, <laughs> fuck, I should mention that my brother in law is an IT manager, so he knows how to do everything. He does, yes. And then we have uh, the Neil in the house who just can hack any he's an piece evil, of technology. He's an evil genius. Ever. Like, literally, he is an evil genius. Like, they bought him a drone, like like a little, you know, uh, yeah. drone for, for Christmas. And, like, I went downstairs to get something from the kitchen, and he said, Aha! And I said, well, what happened? He goes, I figured out what was wrong. And he'd been tinkering with it for hours. And he's like, watch, I'm going to make it climb the stairs. And I'm like, that's great. I'm going to bed. And he was attacking the cat with it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the man who took my Nintendo entertainment system that had been sitting in an attic for 20 years and made it work. Wow. He cleaned it out. He changed over the pen reader. Uh, there was another part too. I can't remember which one. And then he got it to work. It was awesome. I had, I had, a, uh, I had a Sega Saturn uh, uh since new, like uh, when I first got it uh, back in '95, and um, uh, I think I play. I always played it, and then when we moved house, I tried to set it up, and it didn't work. And it was like I thought there was read issues, so I thought there was like something wrong with like the way the CD when the d the game discs were being read. And I thought, oh no, oh no, is this actually dead? So it laid dormant in my in my cupboard for ten years. And then I actually, I actually, I got it out because I needed to move something around in my in my Wait, 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 wait. Coming this August, the Oscar-winning masterpiece, Ten Years a Doorstop. <laughs> well, no, 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 fortunate, no, I... I and you should feel that for No, I, I, I wish it, I wish it had been more, di more dynamic, um, more dynamic story. There would have been of use, no, it was just like stuck in the cupboard for ten years doing nothing. And then I had to move it, and I had a look at the, um, Scott cable, and I was thinking... Hang on a minute, because I just I I obviously I finished graduated like doing a technical thing at uni uh, university about technical and video stuff. I thought, hang on, there are meant to be more teeth in these ca this cable. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute. So I ordered a replacement Scott cable, plugged it in, and I opened it up, because and I just thought, it works. Oh, I thought you were going to say you opened it up and some kind of small animal had been nesting in there, and I was like, oh, no. It's alive! And now, it was like that. I didn't know that it was... I, I It worked after all this time, ten years, not being used, and it, it worked absolutely fine. But then I realised, I don't know where all my games are. Oh, there are 26 oh. games I've got on this, and my, fortunately my brother told me where they all were, so I was eventually able to find it. Now I'm just starting to slowly, like, casually collect classic games as, as and when I find them. Just but remind you how like, hard those games were? Yeah, and just like, just remember just getting to actually play the games I never actually got the chance to play, and finding some good rare ones. Back before save states, where you had to play the whole game in one day! Mm.
and and even when you could save them on the, on these things, you have to have them on a battery that only lasts a year. So if you don't replace yeah. it soon enough from the back of the console, it it deletes itself. That's oh. the end. So, of the world. Yeah. See, I had a Dreamcast like that because a dear friend of mine, one year for my birthday, was like, "This was this was Sam." I was like, I don't have any money to get you a present. I'm like, you don't need to get me a present. He's like, here, I don't use my Dreamcast anymore. Here's my Dreamcast and all the games on the condition that you never trade them in. And I said, all right, sure, yeah. And I eventually, nah, he had he had a special disc that you ran, and then you put one of the Japanese games in, and you could play it. Oh, yeah. But eventually that part broke and never worked again. So, which was fine because the only games that he had in Japanese, I didn't know how to play anyway, and people just screamed at me and kanji came flying from all directions and you had to be in a mech and collect watermelons and I don't know. <laughs> but I did play a lot of Record of Lotus War, yeah. which is an anime, which is what we were talking about, and that was, a, that was a really awesome, solid game. The only thing was that the font was a wee bit too small, so there's a character, Parn, he's an elf, and at one point in time, you, the wizard who resurrected you orders you that Oh, Parn is lost somewhere in the woods. You have to go and find Parn. But because of the resolution, and I was sitting in a chair not far away from the television, it, said, it looked like it said, I need you to go into the woods and find porn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, is there an object for that? And this was like before Google, so I didn't even know how to have my side to look it up on Alta Vista, for Christ's sake. I was like, porn, where is it? What happened? And, and, and so I'm like wandering around, and eventually I get this elf is like, hi, my name is porn. I was like, oh, well, you must be porn then. <laughs> but well, I'm pretty uh, sure there is an elf poor somewhere. Yeah. But eventually, you know, right before I left in August to come here, I did give Sam back his Dreamcast. He's like, "You still have this?" And of course, he told me that's trade bin. He's like, "That was like 15 years ago." I was like, "Well, you know, that's my story." But to bring it back to anime, anime I have a very cute story for you if you want it. Okay. Yeah. Many many years ago, I used to work in a call center. It was boring as hell, and. This was back before they were all, oh, you can't do anything remotely fun ever while you're on the phones. So we were allowed to bring books. And me, just recently being introduced to anime, I was reading the Full Metal Alchemist book. I moved down to the technology department where Zara's brother worked. And he didn't really talk to me much until he noticed the Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> and I was like, what are you reading? And like, oh, it's a, a, a manga. It's a... Japanese thing. He's like, yes, I know. I was like, do you like it? Like, yeah, but I don't have the rest of the book. Okay. He comes in the next day and hands me like 60 <laughs> volumes of something. He says, here, read this and come back to me with your notes. I'm like, he okay. An epic Whoa. <laughs> and that's how me and Colin Aww. got together. Aww. Because I was randomly reading the manga at work. <laughs> See, kids, <laughs> it pays to be a nerd. So that's how we got together. He has he, a really big collection. He really does. He does. Like several he, his before. room uh, quite literally started to bow the floor, so he had to sell some of it. He had five bookcases full of manga. Whoa. And he then had several boxes full of anime. When we moved house, he started to sell some of it. And I didn't buy it again on Blu-ray. Right? Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he actually did do that in a few cases. <laughs> but now he has rather limited his collection, and now he only has... Three bookshelves <laughs> full of anime. So he's like me with live action horrifying movies. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, when I moved in, he was like, all right, so I want to tell you about my study. I thought he was going to say, stay out of my study or you have to use the printer to do something. He's like, here are all of the anime that you can borrow if you want. Just make sure you put it back in the right container when it's done. He's got my complete uh, set of Akira as well because I, I own it. And uh, Oh, I've always wanted, I've only read the first book of it. I mean, I've seen the movie a million times. So. And I, um, I, I, because I knew he collected anime uh, and manga, so I was like, "Here, you look after this. That's okay." You know what I miss, and it's in a box somewhere. God only knows where. Is I had the full, I had the full Dark Horse printing of um, uh, Gunsmith Cats. Uh, uh, cool. I like that one. You wanna know Gunsmith Cats? Hair off. It's basically like we're American in Chicago, and one is a bounty hunter, and the other's her assistant, and. She used to be, the assistant used to work at a, at a brothel and stuff like that, and they own a gunsmithing shop, because that's what they do. Wait, is this the crime. one where the woman reloads her gun using her boobs? No! Oh, no, that, oh that's, um, oh, Grenadier. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, this is like an actual no sex, just crime kind of thing. What about sex? Crime? Well, no, they're actually, actually, no, there is a bit of sex, because in, um, see, the one girl, the assistant girl, used to work at a brothel called the Purple Pussy. And, <laughs> no, this is serious. Is it and, diseased? 
I don't know. It's just that there could have been a translation error. Did I don't they know. serve blue waffles? No. <laughs> <laughs> no bad. But so so she she goes back undercover there because there's some spy that they're trying to catch, and she ends up getting assigned to him because it's all you know a sting, and there's a ser- there's a, a part there in the book where she gives him a blowjob, but because of the either the profanity laws in Japan or America they couldn't draw anything, so it was really weird because she was like licking and fondling nothing the air. And you knew what was supposed to go there, but it was just such a moment of... That's like a schizophrenic sex on. scene. Is this like the four kids edit of Yu-Gi-Oh! No, it like was... It came the invisible guns? No, it was from Dark Horse put it out. So I'm guessing... I know that in Japan they can't show pubic hair. And in the States, I guess... I don't know why they didn't feel like shrink wrapping it or putting parental advisory on it. Because there was Jews just giving a phantom blowjob. I don't know. I don't know how that works. They could have just put, okay, a, ba- a, they could have just put a banana there. They could just, it like, was just nothing. She oh, like, wow, no, I sure like perfect. bananas. I could have just done that, randomly put that in with the, all the, you know... So, as, as a lesbian, until the age of the internet, I actually thought that men's penises were invisible. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I've, seen, uh, I've seen that happen in live action. The, the exact same type of thing, but... Why am I suddenly thinking of the stunt penis out of the Mormon porn thing? Mm. Mormon? What? Uh, mind they get... I can't remember the film. They get the Mormon fella to make... Orgasmo. Por- yes, orgasmo. And it's like, no, don't worry, you don't have to do the sex, we'll use a stunt penis. And this big black guy walks in like, you don't see a problem with this. No. Main character's white. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but in the schizophrenic movies, uh, the main character is, well, the first one's called, you know, oh, the, the whore oh, mangler. Mm-hmm. So it's that sort of film, and he's going around raping everyone. But they, they film the rapes from far enough off so you can see everything. Yet the guy is clearly A, not erect, B, not doing anything, and C, he's not even naked. So he's literally air hum, air raping her. Right. You guys can't see this, but she's making a dirty gesture. And in, in, the, in my review, I've reviewed all the movies, because, you know, mm-hmm. people hate me. I hate people who watch my videos. Yeah. And because of the black boxes I have to use, people, mm-hmm. some people don't believe me, but there is a lot of obvious air raping in those movies. <laughs> And the, just like it. They have full nudity and stuff, and because they're not put out, uh, the way they're put out, you can just put anything in there, so they obviously just didn't feel like filming it, because they could have filmed it easily. Mm. Well, since you're a, the conversation. Since you're a frequent guest, because we are coming up in, on the end, in, what kinds of things, what would draw people to Okumakan? Sell it. Sell uh, it to the world. Well, I All of our five listeners. Well, I would say, well, I'm pretty sure there's way more than that. I'm pretty sure there's like six. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Seven on a good day. But um, no, it's just like, I'd say for Kumacon, it's one of those cons that doesn't have drama. Like, it's a very peaceful convention. You hear that, MAGFest? I mean, what? <laughs> no, but I've, I've been to MAGFest, and MAGFest's a, MAGFest's a lot of fun. Uh, it's but big and noisy. It is big and noisy, but, you know, it's... But then but then you can create your own noise. I mean, just mm. like, have a you know, good time there. Uh, uh, but with the Kumacon, in terms of the other conventions in Ireland, yeah, it's it's like one. It's part of the new generation of, of the conventions. Like there's a Kumacon, Kaizokukon, and Brocon. I've never done Kaizokon, but Brocon, uh, Brocon reminds me of a. It, it's like a pub. Yeah. And Kumacon reminds me more like a slightly more upmarket wine bar. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it, it's just because um, a Kumacon attracts <sighs> Japanese big influential Japanese guests, so everyone's having to be on their best behaviour. And it's understandable, because um, I was actually at a, a wine reception last night, and... Uh, That's swanky. Yeah, I know. And, yeah, you know, this was, like, proper there, and the mayor of Galway was here, you know, with all his regalia. <laughs> and um, and then also, and then suddenly uh, one of the um, people on the, on the Kumikon committee, Minako, she um, actually came over to me and said, Hi, nice to meet you, and, you know, finally actually get to see you after all this time, because I think she was new this year. But I think people are told that I was one of the regulars coming here. And she actually said, oh, come meet Mr. Yamamoto, who's like a big anime producer who's like done Fractal, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. And it's just like, and I'm going, oh, oh, no. And she, he was introducing me as Masako X. And I was going, in my mind, I was screaming, going, no, no, don't do this. Masako is actually a, fe- is, is a, is a female name in Japanese. And <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. That makes me look like a, oh, no. <laughs> Quick backstory, why I'm called Masako is basically, it's just a tribute to, 
it's a tribute to Masako Nozawa, who's the Japanese voice actress of Goku. So it's just like, she was the first kind of Japanese voice actress I actually knew about, and that was really cool, like, the performances were great. So that was just a bit of a nod to that, and just adding the X because, yeah, I had to. Because, 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 no, because like, like, AR Linson you know, Messenger. That yeah. was it. I, yes, I everyone was like, big X, little X, whatever you was in the big X, little X I just, underscore. I, I, Masako was taken, so I had to put an X there. And now everywhere, like on P yeah, PSN or Xbox Live, everyone's taken the Masako X. Somebody's taken it. Damn it. But, I'm impersonating you. No, no, it's just like he was introduced. I was introduced to that, but I, know I said my name is Lawrence, really. And he seemed he seemed semi interested in that I was from London and everything, had a picture, and it was just in my mind. I was just going, oh my god, why was I introduced to Mr. Yamamoto? It's like, why? And I, I, have no, I have no value here, but it was just like, that, that, there was a lot of tension, but just good tension because they wanted to make a good impression. And they did. And, uh, but that's a good thing. Uh, at a Kuma Con, it's very close knit. And it's very, it's very a lot of fun, and it's right next to a bar. Oh yeah, because it's Ireland, and actually everyone is not always drunk. I mean, I'm just saying. Not always, no. Yeah. But they, but basically. In, in shifts. At, you know, at, at the end, at the end of the day, say, so, and that concludes the late night panel. Everyone, are you find me in the bar? So yeah. Broke on has two bars. As, as the Ooh. resident Irish person, there's a bar a stone's throw from anywhere. Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean. You can that, triangulate your position anywhere in Ireland by which bar you're near. Yeah, there is a British convention, Alcon, which is actually takes place in a student bar. <laughs> Albeit the fact I've that heard of Alcon. Alcon is, is where quite a lot of the. Goes that, does he not? Yeah, he I does. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mike J. Uh, I, I these ones I've heard about. You know, all you guys yeah. from England and Wales and I'll go to, and I keep I, I keep messaging after it's happened, saying like, you know, if you'd tell me of these things in advance, I would book and come over. But then they always forget, or they don't want me there. I think that you should just start spying and then just Google, <laughs> just, you know, just, English just, conventions and be like. Cause, Aha! Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. making the expense of the flight and, and, and yeah. everything, and just but, you know, if I if I choose the wrong con and the other ones aren't going, it's like pointless. Yeah. So uh, I, I need to know if everyone else is going. Mm. Well, usually there's a channel or some contingent there. There's usually there's usually Welshy, we Welshy, Mike J, and Film Brain. Okay, and, I'll make uh, an effort to go. I want yeah. to go to the Comic Con in London as well for the oh, same reason. Yeah, but I just say uh, be sure to uh, wear some very comfortable shoes. There's yeah. lots of walking. Lots of queuing. It's the British way. No, there's a lot of queuing, and especially because I, again, I used to go to MTM quite regularly when it was slightly smaller, but now it's become a full blown Comic Con of over 100,000 people over a weekend. Uh, you queue a lot, even if you come at 7 o'clock in the morning. Ooh. So just be, be aware that you'll have to wait a lot to get in. And this was because I, I did a favour for the guy who ran MCM by doing some graphics for them, so I, met, I got some free passes. So I got like to press passes mm -hmm. and uh, I think and uh, even then still have to queue and it was like <laughs> and it was like we were j and didn't help it in typical British fashion it was raining hooray um, we had a similar thing we, we were we did press ages ago for the Ottawa Comic Con and we had to queue to get into that but that wasn't rainy but it was on a windswept field all oh, right in so Canada yeah where it's cold and you was, just cannot handle the, the cold at all oh, yeah. I'm just really Canada in that. winter also, also, I yeah. I hate I hate PME. So, I just even if it was only yeah. like in the fifties, it was in the thirties as far as I'm concerned, just mentally speaking. Oh, random question. Um, mm -hmm. Because you're biggest, uh, you're, you're most famous for the abridging. Yes. And um, are there any shows that you've never seen an abridgment for, but you would like to see it? That is a very very hard question because nowadays there are pre that you can have to. Th it's hard. It's easier to think which shows. Uh, haven't been abridged more than once. Oh wow! Because what I did, uh, I did Kempfer abridged, which is like a Ron McClone, only a lot more stupid. And yeah. I did that. <laughs> I did that because I found it. It was an impulsive thing back in two thousand and nine, and not too long after I started making it, I found that five other productions were making it. So there were five other versions. They died out within three episodes, and mine managed to actually make it through to the end of the series. Wow! After about two years. And threatened my, and I think I, my YouTube channel got taken down. Or it was just like my, all the other episodes were fine. They they didn't get touched. The first one always got every time I uploaded it within seconds, bam, content alert. Thinking, why the first one? Why the first one? That's all right now, but um, I guess in terms of um, new shows, I mean it's like because oh, I I don't know really. I think. Again, I'd love to see an Attack on Titan abridged. Oh wait, we did that. We did that and that got taken down. Oh well. 
No, it was uh, a shame because that was quite cool. Okay, it was, it was actually... There's no, there's no easy answer, so I will um, no reverse time and I will pretend that the question did not happen. So anyway, it's time for that part of the show that we couldn't get rid of even though we tried. It's time for Giovanni's trivia question. And Giovanni, are you with us? Yeah, boss. Um, I have to say that riding in the luggage rack on the bus was not the best and you will be hearing from my lawyer. Cracked his carapace. Exactly! I know, right? Unfortunately, I can just always go back up to the NHS, but I can't do that here in the public, so I'm drunk. But anyway... At, so, least, at least with lobsters, they regenerate their, their shells. At least some of them do. It's not instantaneous! <laughs> and not like Wolverine, for Christ's sake, but anyway. So last week, I asked you, what is the Toyota-approved pronunciation of the plural of Prius? And like a German guy, that jerk work, he got it first. It is Prii, which sounds really obnoxious. So jerk work, you gotta stop this man, or else you'll end up my favorite person, and we just can't have that. But I got a new one. To celebrate being done and going, to celebrate the fact that I'm an anime convention for reals, and I haven't been eaten yet. Yes. Most, it's mostly because I'm a talking companion. We're always magical or something. So, who knows? What was your first anime convention in Ireland? Your first one in Ireland, what was it? If you know the answer, once this goes up on Blip, be the first one to tweet at your Mega Geek. This at your Mega Geek, and you will be. My favorite mammal this week. And Masco, do you want to hazard a guess? To clarify, it's the entire Ireland, the entire island of Ireland, not just the Republic. Yeah. Yes. Or the North. Unity in my trivia questions always. Oh, oh that's is. Oh, I don't. I don't really know because it's like there have been. I, all I know is that there have been loads of variations of other ones, so they've all kind of interchanged and spliced. And no, this is a real tough one, guys. Exactly. Like a lobster shell. That's why it's fun. So anyway, my adoring public, I'm going to head back to the dealer's room because people want to take me a picture of me because they think I'm cosplaying. I'm not cosplaying, though. You're like a foot tall. Shut up. I'm foot magical. Long. Maybe I have a mech. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, see you later on. And, uh... Wait, 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 wait. We have to do it right because we have a guest. Where can people find oh. you if they want to know more? Well, if they want to know more about my stuff, they can just add me on Twitter, MasterCoX, and then just check out my website, AnifarReviews.com. I also have a YouTube channel where I re I do review anime, but I also review bad fan fiction. And then basically... You're that, Rosenhacker? <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, oh, no, seriously, the, uh, the, I, have, uh, I have a fan fiction involving tele uh, the Teletubbies and Professor <laughs> Snape. And it's not a good, it's not a very pleasant oh, one. Oh God, I heard of this that, one. That's my last. It's my last, and it's called "Why Is Poe So Pale?" <laughs> well, I no, know he's been raped by Snape. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'll, li Snape. I'll leave it at that, and um, uh, and then just like put, and then just doing some random shit in Google Translate and coming up with some really really weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's just like anything. Like today's latest one was like a Disney thing, so Disney is not safe. Not safe for life. And uh, and where can we find find you about you? Usually on the floor of your reviews. This is true. <laughs> Sometimes in my backseat critiques. <laughs> so that's been us for this week, and I've been the Omega. And honey, who do you have? What to have been? I have been Massacre X. And, and I've I, got I, some questions about last night. Hey, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs>